This is the Station Pocket Cloud or Station PC for short, and it basically is a portable NAS that fits in your pocket. Think of it as a tiny piece you can carry anywhere with you. It caught my attention when it started popping all over the internet and I've been using it for about two months now. Station PC sent this over with a dock so I could test it and make a video for you guys. They don't get to see this before it goes live, they didn't tell me what to say and everything you hear is based on my own experience after using this system for a while. Before I get into all the details in this video, let me say this up front in case you don't get to make it to the end, this thing is a must have. If you create content, travel a lot, shoot with multiple cameras or work weddings or events where losing footage is not an option, this deserves a serious look. The Pocket Cloud is a battery powered mini PC built for real data management. It gives you flexible and secure storage in the compact designs. You get two M.2 NVMe SSD slots so you can mix different drive sizes and build your own backup system. The whole idea behind it is simple. The power of a NAS bed portable. You can store, backup and access your files anywhere with encryption built in and no reliance on cloud services. Under the hood of this device, it runs a quad-core ARM Cortex-A55 up to 2 GHz and ARM Mali G52 graphics processor, 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM, 32 gigs of ROM, a neural processing unit rated at 1 TOPS, Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6. And silly me, I didn't even notice half of what this dock could actually do. When I first unboxed it, the dock itself doesn't just have a LAN port which is at the front with a USB-C port for charging it, there is also a SSD slot hidden behind these two screws. I don't know if you can see that two screws there. If you, if you, sorry, the two screws here, if you unscrew this and pull out this section, there's a hidden SSD slot there where you can install an additional SSD drive in it. This turns the whole setup into a tiny home NAS that's always on you and always backing up. Way more useful than I realized. You can throw an 8TB drive in the dock and another in the main unit. When you leave for a shoot, you take the pocket cloud with you while this side, the dock, which is another backup, says safe at home or in the studio. Currently, I have a 4TB Western Pro SSD inside this. I haven't yet installed an SSD in this. Just wanted to let you guys know. And you can notice that magnetic thing. If I bring it close, it just snaps on. Would it fall if I... Oopsie, it's heavy. This is quite heavy. But there's that magnetic thing that helps you align it properly and have it docked. Pocket Cloud measures 153 by 93 by 27 millimeters and weighs about 363 grams without an SSD installed. After installing a drive, mine came in at about 387 grams. It's made from ABS plastic, PC plastic, and aluminum alloy. In the hand, it feels very premium. I've been using it without a case or bag and I haven't picked up a single scratch so far, which is very nice. One side has two hex screws. The only screws on the outside let you access into the internals where the removable battery and SSD slot leave. On the other hand, you've got a PD USB-C port for 12 volt, 2.5 amp power, USB-A port, and SD card slot. The gold contacts are for the dock and a 0.9 inch LCD screen and the control knob. As for noise, this system runs quiet even with the internal fans. And in my time with using it, I haven't had any overheating issues. Even when docked and copied large files, the body never felt too hot. I never heard the fans spin loud. Setup is simple. In the box, you get a small hex screwdriver that works with the screws on the pocket cloud. Unscrew the top screws here, pop in your SSD, make sure it's 2280 size, put the cover back and power it on. The first boot walks you through a quick setup. Once that's done, you can plug in an SD card and start backing up right away. The Pocket Cloud works with an app called the Station Cloud. You can connect from your phone, iPad like a Javier, Mac or Windows PC. You can even back up your phone with one tap or your iPad, depending on the device that's connected to the session PC at the time. And you can have multiple devices like an iPad and a phone and even a PC connect at the same time. You're able to see the amount of space left. Well, I have the iPad here, I'm recording the screen. So I'll just show you, tell you what this thing can do while I show the app. I'll resize my app a bit so I can put it on one side of the screen. You can see the overall health of the station PC. You can see that I'm connected and you can see the battery level right now is at 90%. And I can see the amount of space I have left on the 
or on the SSD you have installed. I can see here, or you can see here, I'm connected using my iPad Pro 12 inch um, version 5. I can click backup and it begins to backup the entire thing. And I can say backup when it's 20%. Equal. You can see the things I will not backup. I cancel. This is a 2 terabyte um, SSD installed in this iPad. If I have it here, it probably would, well, they'll save the space after I back it up, but I don't want to do that. You see the um, common icons like backup photos, Docker, download, encrypted, local share, favorites, and a recycle bin. My recycle bin is empty and files are automatically deleted after 15 days. Well, you can change that, but I'll go out of here. I can see my recent files, and this is a shot I had um, recently um, backed up to the drive. But there are other things you can do. You can go into the files, which shows you all the folder, um, YouTube. I created a folder, YouTube. Um, but the rest of the folders here are automatically created by the system. And you can have external drives. If external drives are connected, you'd see the external. You can mount or mount. You have very favorite, some of the things you saw in the home screen. You can go to the photos, which shows everything that's on um, the drive, that we backed up to the drive. And you can, well, view it by year, month. I'll just click here to show you. I'll go back. And you have cinema mode. Um, I haven't added a media library. You can change your media library and settings. I'll come out of it. And you have the device menu, which shows you more about the device. You can change um, file services where you can have it in Samba service mode enabled, web dev service enabled, which I have enabled, and NFS service, which I don't have enabled as yet. You have user management where you can, I have myself as the administrator, you can adjust that if you want. You have remote access, now load up and show you more stuff about the device. I'll go back and you have the disk which shows you the one drive that's connected which is just this one here. And if I go back, you have the hardware system, give you more information about the system, battery level, have um, auto power mode, um, auto screen rotate where the screen here can auto rotate if I flip it the other way and you can shut down the device here, you can restart it, you can factory reset if you want and if I go out there, you have the network setup, I don't want to go in there and you have the system upgrade where you can upgrade, well it's set to automatic upgrade and shows my current version firmware. So if I click on the icon, I can have more information about my device or I'll go back, go back to home and if I click on the human, uh, small human icon at the top left, there's more things you can do with a device. While well, filming with Tanju from K24 Tech, he gave me CF Express Type B card. I plugged it to the station PC using a Type B card reader that had a USB A port at the end. I plugged in that reader and back to the footage while we grabbed some food. I think for me, personally, it would be a fantastic tool to have in my bag because. If your storage gets full and you don't have spare SD cards or memory cards on you, then being able to back it up, you wipe your memory card, ca carry on working is really good. But this is the first time I'm picking one of these up. I've seen them online, but I've never actually held one. So I don't know exactly what they can do. So, just, yeah, that's, that's it. Oh, so, so it gives you the option for SD backup, settings, USB drive mode. So I'm guessing you can use this as an external drive as well, yes. which is super handy. Uh, USB drive backup. SD card, but yeah, so it's got quite a lot of really good options there. The biggest value with this device is time. This thing saves you time and stress. If you've ever accidentally formatted the wrong card or skipped backing something up after a long day, you know how easy it is to lose footage. It's happened to me a few times. With this, you just back up as you go. After a long shoot with multiple cameras, you could be backing up the card right in the car or on the train on your way home. By the time you get home, everything is done. Then you dock it and you let it mirror to the second SSD if you have that and optionally back up to a bigger NAS. I use a Synology for my third copy. This thing gives you five ways to move your files around and each one has its own speed and purpose. Number one, USB A backup. You can plug card readers or drives like I earlier mentioned to USB A port and its read speeds are between 220 megabits per second while the write speed is 208 megabits per second. Number two is LAN backup. When the pocket cloud is docked, you can use the LAN port for faster, more stable transfers. Write speeds are 275 megabits per second, read speed 208 megabits per second. Number three,
is Wi-Fi mode, which is something connected wirelessly. Connect to the pocket cloud over your regular Wi-Fi. The upload speed is 65 megabits per second, while the download is 68 megabits per second. Number four is SD card backup. Drop your SD card in and it starts backing up. Well, it will ask you, do you want to back up um, the SD card? The read speeds are 58 megabits per second, while the write is 59 megabits per second. Not the fastest, but perfect if you're on the field. And the final one, which is number five, is AP mode. Upload speed here is 65 megabits per second, while download speed is 68 megabits per second. AP mode basically turns the pocket cloud into its own own little hotspot. You connect to it directly, no routers are needed. This is huge when you're outside on set or nowhere near Wi-Fi. Everything transfers directly from device to device. Now, in case you're wondering if I've not had any performance or reliability issues, in the two months I've had this device, I've experienced no crashes or major issues. Only once did it skip some files during backup, but I'm not sure why, if I recall correctly, the battery was really low and then the device shut down while copying things over. Every other time, it copied everything without missing a thing. This makes it the most sense for people who deal with media on a regular basis or anyone who hates the idea of losing files. If you film regularly for YouTube, client work, short films, or social content, this lets you back up footage the moment you're done. No waiting until you get to them, no risking that one corrupted card. If you're into wedding and events, these jobs are long, chaotic, and usually involve multiple cameras filming at the same time. The pocket cloud acts like a safety net. You can start backing up during breaks in the car or even at a reception if you really want to stay ahead of things. And if your memory card is full, you can take that out if you have just one or you have to back up one while using the other one so you can have um, one spare in case you need it. For travel filmmakers and photographers, when you're on the road, you don't always want to carry a laptop and a full backup setup. This works anywhere. When I was out filming with Tanji, Tanji had his iPad, I had just this small device, and it worked. This works anywhere and takes up almost no space. So even amongst these people who shoot on multiple cameras or formats, SD cards, CF Express cards, micro SD cards, you plug it in, whatever you send it to it, it will back up to the same place. Everything stays organized and automatically dated for you. But my main complaint is that it doesn't scan media before backing up. So if you insert an SD card today, they already backed up last week, it will copy everything again. I know that's a lot to ask for, but it would have been great if it could scan the cards and, no, not in um, duplicates, so they are not duplicated files. I also wish it had a second USB-C port dedicated to backing up in case I want to connect USB-C device. The USB-C port on this device is mainly for power or connecting it to a computer where you can act as a drive. Now for pricing, the Pocket Cloud retails at $299 if you're in the US and during sales like Black Friday, you can get it for around $254.15. At that price, I think it's a great pick up. This is a solid piece of gear. I was surprised to find the extra SSD slot in the dock. That's my issue. And the whole system feels complete. It's fast, it's portable, it keeps files safe and easily fits into a modern workflow where people are shooting and editing every single day. If you're a creator who already owns a large NAS, this works perfectly as a front-end backup machine. You copy cards on the go, then mirror everything to your main NAS. When you get home, it becomes a workflow booster. If you run out of card space on set, you can back up to this device and keep working. It's powerful, it's this small, and the speeds go up to roughly, I think, a thousand megabits per second. Yes, a thousand megabits per second. If you have questions, drop in the comments below. I'm active. I'll do my best to respond to each and every one of them. Leave a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about the station Pocket Cloud. I've left links in the description if you want to pick one up. It's your filmmaker, and I'll see you in the next one. God bless and peace.